Show me some love. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Eighth grade unit four, lesson three, balanced moves. Problem number one. In this hanger, the weight of the triangle is X and the weight of the square is Y. A. Write an equation using X and Y to represent the hanger. On the left side of the hanger, we have one X and three Y's, and on the right side of the hanger, we have four X's and one Y. The equation would read X plus three Y equals four X plus Y. B, if X is six, what is Y? I've labeled all the triangles with a six and the squares with a question mark. The first thing I notice is I can get rid of the question mark on the right side and get rid of one of the question marks on the left side. And I did the same thing in the equation. I removed the Y from the right side of the equal sign, and now I need to remove a Y from the left side of the equal sign. Since we're solving for Y, I need to remove the triangle from the left side of the hanger. To keep it balanced, I need to remove one triangle from the right side of the hanger. I also removed a Y from both sides of the equal sign. Now the equation reads 2y equals 3x. Look at the right side of the hanger. 6 plus 6 plus 6 equals 18. And it's balanced with the two squares on the left side of the hanger. So we have to ask ourselves, what number times 2 equals 18? 9 times 2 equals 18. So I can stop right here. I don't have to go any further. I know that y equals 9. Problem number 2. Match each set of equations with the move that turned the first equation into the second. Equation A started with a 6x and ended up with a 2x. And on the right side of the equation, it started with a 4x minus 3 and ended up with only a minus 3. So it looks like they subtracted 4x from both sides, which is the same thing as adding a negative 4x to both sides. Equations A match the number 4 moves. Equation B, negative 4 times 5x, which would be negative 20x, but then it becomes positive 5x. It became 4 times smaller and was multiplied by a negative. Look at the right side of equation B. It's a little bit easier. It goes from a negative 18 to a positive 4.5. So we know it was multiplied by a negative because a negative times a negative equals a positive and 4.5 is four times smaller than 18 or one fourth the size of 18. So I would pick move one, multiply both sides by negative one fourth. The equations for B match up with the moves for number one. Let's take a look at the equations for C starts out as 8 minus 10x and then it becomes 4 minus 10x. So it looks to me like they just subtracted 4 and subtracting 4 is the same as adding a negative 4. And look at the right side of the equal sign. 7 minus 4 is 3. So the moves for number 5 match up with the equations for C. Let's look at the right side of equation D. It goes from a 4 to a negative 16. So it becomes four times bigger and it becomes a negative. I think both sides must have been multiplied by a negative four. The moves for two match up with the equations for D. And finally, the equations for E. Let's just look at the right side of the equal sign. It goes from a 20x plus 24 down to a 5x plus six. 5x is 4 times smaller than 20x, and 6 is 4 times smaller than 24. It looks like they've multiplied both sides by 1 fourth. The steps for 3 match up with the equations for E. Number 3. Andre and Diego were each trying to solve 2x plus 6 equals 3x minus 8. Describe the first step they each made to the equation. A. The result of Andre's first step was negative x plus 6 equals negative 8. 
Well, it looks to me like Andre subtracted 3x from both sides of the equal sign. 2x minus 3x equals negative 1x or negative x. So Andre subtracted 3x from each side. That's the same thing as adding a negative 3x to each side. B. The result of Diego's first step was 6 equals x minus 8. On the left side of the original equation, it reads 2x plus 6. After his first step, it only reads 6. He must have subtracted 2x. Let's look at the right side of the equal sign. It went from 3x minus 8 and became x minus 8. He subtracted 2x from both sides of the equal sign which is the same thing as adding a negative 2x to both sides of the equal sign. Number 4. A. Complete the table with the values for x or y that make this equation true. 3x plus y equals 15. In this table, the x values run horizontally across the top. The equation says 3x. That means that we have to have three values for x. The value for x here is 2, so we need 2 plus 2 plus 2, which is 6. 6 plus what number equals 15? 6 plus 9 equals 15, so the value for y is 9, when the value for x is 2. The next column gives us the value for y. 15 minus 3 equals 12, and 12 divided by 3 equals 4. When the value for y is 3, the value for x is 4. Look at the next column. The value for x is 6. And remember, it's 3x, so 3 times 6. 3 times 6 is 18. To get from 18 to 15, we need to subtract 3. So the value for y is negative 3 when the value for x is 6. In the next column, the value for x is 0. So 15 minus 0 equals 15. So y is 15 when the value for x is 0. In the next column, the value for x is 3. And 3 times 3 is 9. 15 minus 9 is 6. So when the value for x is 3, the value for y is 6. In the next column, the value for y is 0. 15 minus 0 equals 15. So x must equal 5 because 5 times 3 equals 15. When the value for y is 0, the value for x is 5. The last column is a little bit trickier because the y value is 8. 15 minus 8 equals 7. So what number times 3 equals 7? 2 and 1 third times 3 equals 7. And 2 and 1 third is also equivalent to 7 thirds. When the y value is 8, the x value is 7 thirds, or 2 and 1 third. B. Create a graph, plot these points, and find the slope of the line that goes through them. I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to use the far left vertical line as my y axis, and the very bottom horizontal line as my x axis. And this means that I'm not going to actually plot all the points. I'm not going to be able to go down negative 3 along the vertical y-axis, and I don't have enough units to go up positive 15 along the vertical y-axis. I'll start by plotting the point for coordinates 2 and 9. I'll count 2 to the right from the origin along the horizontal x-axis, and 9 vertically along the y-axis, and plot my first point. Next, I'll plot the point for coordinates 4 and 3. 4 to the right from the origin along the x-axis, and 3 up from the origin along the y-axis, and plot my second point. It's always a good idea to plot at least three points so you know that your line is accurate. Let's plot the point for coordinates 3 and 6. I'll count 3 to the right along the x-axis, and 6 vertically along the y-axis, and plot my third point. Next, I'll draw the line running through all three points. Next, I need to find the slope. And remember, the slope is the rise over the run. Let's find the rise. 
The rise is three. Let's find the run. The run is one to the left. So that means negative one. Three divided by negative one is negative three. So the slope is negative three. Number five, select all the situations for which only zero or positive solutions make sense. A, measuring temperature in degrees Celsius at an Arctic outpost each day in January. Ooh, that sounds cold. So I'm sure that we would need to have solutions that could also be negative or below zero. Situation A could have solutions of zero, positive, or negative. Let's look at B, the height of a candle as it burns over an hour. Well, it doesn't make sense to think that a candle could burn anything below zero. Once the candle completely melts or burns out, the smallest it could get would be zero. The solutions for situation B could be zero or positive. C, the elevation above sea level of a hiker descending into a canyon. This one's kind of tricky because they're talking about his location, which is above sea level. However, he is going to descend into the canyon, and it is possible for canyons to be below sea level. The solution for situation C could be zero, positive, or negative, depending on where the hiker is at any time. D. The number of students remaining in school after 6 o'clock p.m. Well, either there's going to be a few students or there's going to be zero students. It's impossible to have a negative amount of students remaining at school. So the only answers that make sense for this one are zero or positive solutions. E, a bank account balance over a year. This one's a little bit tricky too, but sometimes people withdraw or spend too much money so their balance goes into a negative. So the solution for this one could be negative, zero, or positive. So this one does not make sense to have the solutions only zero or positive. F, the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit of an oven used on a hot summer day. They give us a few clues. One is that the oven's being used. So if the oven's being used, its temperature will be positive. The other clue is that it's a hot summer day, and a hot summer day's temperature would also be positive. So even if the oven wasn't being used, the temperature of the oven would be a positive temperature. Only zero or positive solutions make sense for situation F. Help me disrupt YouTube's algorithm by liking this video, commenting on this video, sharing this video, and subscribing to my channel. Thanks. I appreciate it.